hour after a devastating house fire destroyed decades of her life's work, mm. celebrity cook Rachel Ray is back with a new book and new perspective. The businesswoman and author joins us now. Her new book is entitled, This Must Be the Place, Dispatches and Food from the Home Front. Is it the place? Where are you? How are you? And tell us about the new perspective. Well, I mean, Joe must love the title of the book. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on your podcast. Thank and, you. Uh, you know, Naive Melody, uh, This Must Be the Place is one of my favorite songs of all time. But it was basically um, a project during uh, this pandemic to relate to the world. You know, I'm 53 mm. years old and it's the first time the whole world went through some sort of pivot, loss or rethinking of what home means and how we feel about each other and you know who's essential in our community so we went through all of these these things together as a planet mm -hmm. and I just started writing about that really John and I um, have been making over 250 shows between all of the daytime shows and and 30 minute meals from home uh, for 20 months now. And uh, the first thing we lost was our privacy. The second thing we lost was our dog of 15 and a half years. Aww. Then we lost our home and burned into the ground. And I, I wanted to share with everyone how we felt about that and, mm, and wow. what, it, what it was mm. um, to think about what home means. Home is not your stuff. It's a state of mind. And as is written so beautifully in the song, how do you find your wings? How do you find the wings that cover you? You know, that's, that's what you have when you lose everything. John lost decades of um, music charts. I lost decades of my journals, my mother's letters to me, and she has mm. very bad macular degeneration, so it's very hard for her to write letters to anybody anymore. And, when you look back on that, you're like, okay, the stuff's gone, but you lived it. And if you have cognitive thought and you are blessed enough to open your eyes, that's home. And you're surrounded by people that you love or you have a sense of community. That's what home is. It's, it's not what you lose, it's what you have. You know, so, it's it's so interesting, Rachel, because no, thank you so much for sharing because I did, I noticed sort of a change um, in what you were sharing, how you were sharing in terms of yourself and your relationships in, you know, your social media posts. And I just, I love following you because I, I like you a lot. Um, but to, to be homebound because of the pandemic and then to lose the home, that is new perspective where you really do focus on human bonds, which is something we even were celebrating last night, being out for the first time and being with friends. And it was congratulations to your mom, one of yes. the world's greatest artists. She's oh, amazing. it's so exciting. Yeah. You know, the only time I can't watch you is when I'm with you. And they've made it so I, I'm literally seeing all of us at the same time, so I'm not missing a minute, actually. And we're together. Yay. <laughs> and, and we're together, together. <laughs> which is um, so nice. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's just, you know, everyone has pivoted not only their businesses in my industry, but their lives. You know, how much time do I want to spend at work? Let's analyze how our lives are only worth something on weekends and vacations versus every day. And that's the discussion I think that everybody's living through now. And as we come back to the world, and as everything opens up, and it's great to be sitting together again, and able to travel here and there, and the, the world opening up to our country, it is just so interesting that we've learned more value for ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. I think especially women always put themselves last on the list in life. And I think that we've all learned the value of each of our lives and the worth of the end of our day, the middle of our day. And growing up in a multi-generation family with um, 
uh, my, my grandpa being my primary caretaker when I was a kid, that's always been the core of everything I do. I only want what's best for the larger or the community. And no matter what time of day it is, I want to have a connection with my, my family, the family I make or the family I was born to. Right. And I, I think we've all come to that place, and that's a good And that's hey, what I wanted Willie. to discuss. That's perfect. Hey, Rachel, really it's good. Willie. It's so great to see you. Congratulations on oh the book. Oh, my God, Willie. Congratulations. <laughs> that's a reception. We don't do that for you. you. Thank Please you, Rachel. Sponsor you. Oh, my and gosh. Team Fox. Do you know uh, we are Rachel, such fans of your dad, been, of you, and of, and of oh, Michael man, Rodden. You're the best. We you've always were. been. <laughs> yes, keep going. Let me get oh. out of the way here. Keep no, going. I'm serious. Our family deals with ALS and Alzheimer's. That's our family's connection to Parkinson's because the research is also interconnected. We have been huge supporters of Team Fox for so I many know years, you have. and we were huge supporters of you. We went on your page. We were with you, not for yes. the mile, but we were with you in the money, brother. You are the best. You are the best. You've always been a big supporter of the Michael J. Fox Foundation. I've seen you at all the events. You guys are so great, and thank you for contributing. You know we're over $400,000 now of money raised. The goal was 100000 so thank you for being a big part of that. Um, I want to ask you quickly, Rachel, before we have to go, uh, about your foundation and the incredible work you do at the Rachel Ray Foundation and what's happening in Congress right now that you say may help some of the work you guys do. Triple B, uh, Build Back Better. You know, I wish you guys talk about this all the time. It is not about the number of the act. It is about the numbers that affect the people. And, and why do we not just discuss that? Yes, okay, we all want a great number from the CBO score, terrific. But if we just got this done, for, for me, John and I don't have children. So for us, our kids are the kids of our country. And if we got this done, child poverty's got 40% again for just one more year, but another year, awesome. Nine million kids would, would have access to free school meals, which is the only level playing field to lower childhood obesity, uh, diseases that force children to take adult drugs way too early in their lives, and the only access they have to good food. And if we got that, then you would get the community eligibility provision that would allow those same children to go from five states to 50 states to have access to food all year long, including the summer. Mm -hmm. Their families would be given a provision yeah. to buy good food from the grocery store to give their kids great nutrition. It feeds their brain, it feeds our next generation. Yeah. I, I just wish we would talk more about the numbers that matter, Amen. the numbers that are attached to human beings, not the numbers that are attached to an act. Right. That, that, exactly oh, right. Rachel Ray. Rachel. This is awesome. Rachel. This is so awesome. Rachel, thank you're the Rachel. best. Thank you, Rachel. I love we you love guys you. so much. The new so book. So much love and respect. So much love. Mwah. The new book is This Must Be the Place, Dispatches and Food from the Home Front. It is so moving. Now, let me tell you Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.